My name is Martino Stierli. I'm the Philip Johnson Chief Curator of Architecture and Design at the Museum of Modern Art. And I'm here at the Bauhaus Museum Dessau as a participant in the Collecting the Bauhaus Conference beginning of December 2019. The Bauhaus for me was a radical experiment, a laboratory that negotiated not only the relationship of the uh, fine arts with the applied arts, including design, but also art and everyday life. And I think it was truly radical in the sense that it tried to break up existing hierarchies and uh, reconsider how we should live together and what that living together should look like. Besides the experimental laboratory uh, side of the Bauhaus that I'm particularly interested in, the Bauhaus was also, of course, a phenomenal marketing and branding success and strategy. And I am hesitant to call everything Bauhaus that is remotely related to anything modernist that was happening in the early part uh, of the 20th century. That said, I think the ideological impact of the Bauhaus as an idea, as a pedagogical experiment, and as a fundamental rethinking of industrial production, craftsmanship, and uh, the way we live um, cannot be underestimated or overstated. Mm -hmm. So the Museum of Modern Art's uh, foundational director, Alfred Barr, took the Bauhaus and, then, and its multidisciplinary um, um, system as a blueprint, as it were, for the museum in that he wanted to replicate that, um, that system in the museum's structure. And so collecting Bauhaus objects for him was a, a very important um, aspect. That said, Museum of Modern Art, of course, um, embraces other modernisms as well. It's not all focused on, on the Bauhaus. There are substantial uh, collections of, 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 of Russian avant-garde, of, of the French avant-garde, for example, all of which, of course, were in relationship and conversation with the Bauhaus and other things that were going on in Germany. And more and more, uh, of course, as we are, have been moving into the 21st century, the idea of what was modernism on a global scale and how has modernism transformed into our contemporary world um, is more in the focus of um, how we collect. And interestingly, this of course is also reflected in how we think about, about the Bauhaus today, not so much as a merely transatlantic operation between Germany and North America, but really uh, something, an institution that had an impact um, on, on a global scale really. There's hardly an aspect of the Bauhaus that has not found uh, an incredible attention in this uh, 100th anniversary. Um, I believe what has been very interesting for me uh, more recently is uh, a reconsideration of the contribution of women artists, for example, to, to the Bauhaus. Also, I'm particularly interested in the idea of uh, the, the Bauhaus as a place of transgression, of social transgression, of um, tearing down boundaries, of experimenting with gender identities, um, things like that. I think there's uh, more research uh, to be done. And um, clearly um, also perhaps the historical context within which the Bauhaus um, um, took place. We sometimes forget that the Bauhaus, of course, also had a prehistory in Germany through the Werkbund and, you know, other reform movements that are, I think, very important to keep in mind. And that there are also uh, interesting sister institutions um, in various other places of the world where I think we could learn a lot from comparative studies, for example, the Verhutemas in Moscow, which pursued an equally experimental approach, or the Cranbrook Academy, out of which Johnson Ray Eames would come. So um, I think there's a, a lot of um, thinking still to be done there in that sort of contextual surrounding. 